Hey guys, it's TechRan here and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'll be upgrading my NAS. If you guys do not know, I have a Ugreen DXP 4800 Plus NAS with two 22 terabyte hard drives, which is in an RAID 1 format, which is amazing for me since I have redundancy plus 20 terabytes of actual storage for my NAS, for my YouTube, for my video production, and pretty much just for anything I want to mass storage on my actual NAS. The problem with it is though, I've almost run out of all that space entirely. I've used a total of 16.1 terabytes of footage. So yeah, that's like only three terabytes left on my NAS left until like I have to upgrade. And that's what we're gonna do here today. We're gonna upgrade the DXP 4800 plus NAS with of course, two new hard drives I got in because the DXP is a four bay NAS in a RAID 1 format. And if we install two more 22 terabytes hard drives, we can get an additional 60 terabytes of actual storage. And that's what we're gonna do here today. So I'm pretty excited about this. I just got these off eBay. If you guys did not know, you can buy refurbished hard drives on eBay. I've done in the past to see if it's actually like a bad or good idea. And what I found from testing these hard drives is that they're perfectly good and they come with a two year warranty too. So yeah, you get to save like an additional like two to three hundred dollars because if I was to buy these drives new, it'd be around like four to five hundred dollars to even six hundred dollars at that. And you can see they're all bubble wrapped up and we got a, the two two twenty two terabyte exo hard drives. So what we're gonna do is go to my server room and get these installed real quick. So this is kind of just a storage room. I keep a bunch of stuff in, but this is where all my server equipment is. But here we have my two you green nasses so you guys didn't know i have two of them one i bought myself which is the first one this is in a raid one format with two 22 terabyte hard drives giving me 20 terabytes of storage plus another 20 terabytes of additional storage so if one drive fails i can reinstall a new drive and everything will be perfectly safe so what i plan to do is install the additional drives here for the 22s into slot three and four and then change the format because you can do that with the you green nasses from raid one to raid five without losing any data and then gain an additional 60 terabytes of space altogether. So that'll be really nice. The other one here is kind of just another NAS I have that Ugreen sent out to me as a sponsorship. I haven't actually done anything with it yet, but I plan to do something later where I sell four 24 terabyte hard drives, which will allow me to give myself 65 terabytes of actual space. Look at this. Look who's wandering on in here. One of my cats are just lurking. So, hello, Summer. He's absolutely adorable. He's a little gremlin. And the reason why I'm gonna have that set up like that is because I'm gonna have a one, two, three setup. And if you guys do not know what that means, it's like I'm gonna have two NASs here on site. So let's say if this NAS has a failure, I will have a uh, snapshot of the system on this NAS, plus all the data backed up. So if I wanna repair this NAS, I can. But then that way, this will be a backup for this one, which will be awesome. And on top of that too, there's a podcast I'm working for a company for, and they said I could actually store another NAS on site at their location. So I'll have two on site here and one off site for safety. And I think I'll make the last one probably an eighth day later. I'm probably gonna grab another one new green NASs because I've been really enjoying their NASs, but I'm not too sure if I'll get it. I'm, I'm kind of debating between another NAS. I'm not gonna say what it is just yet, but uh, you green, you wanna send me out with your eight bay? be appreciated because it's not cheap to say the very least, especially with the hard drives. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this off for the time being. Now that it's shut down properly, what we're gonna do is push the button here on both of these and pull up both of our hard drive bays. And we're gonna install our drives into these real quick. So what we're gonna do is take these bays. And the good thing about these bays is that on the back here, you can actually see a push slip. If we push the slip, it'll open it on up. And now all we have to do is line in our drive like so, and then close it on up. And then we got our first drive all ready to go. Do the exact same thing on this, push the slip on the back, pull it up. Then we're just gonna take our drive, slip it on in. And now that we got the drive, we're gonna just line this on up and slip this on in. Push that in like there. We're just do the exact same thing with the other one here. Push that on in. And with that, we just turn on our NAS and go into the software of the device. Well, the nice thing about the Ugreen software is once you actually log in and you go into storage, you can actually set up your RAID in here. So for right now, I'm gonna go into storage and you can see I have my pool two for my 20 terabyte actual RAID format for RAID one. And what we're gonna do to modify this into RAID five is we're gonna click on the three dots and we're gonna say RAID change RAID type. And then we can switch it to RAID five. So we're gonna click change and then we can select the hard drive. So I got the new 22 terabytes. So I'm gonna apply for bay three. Now keep in mind, all the data on the third drive will be deleted. Since there's nothing on that drive, we will not need to worry about that. So we're gonna click format, click our password in here real quick and click confirm. So we're gonna have to wait for this, the process first for the first drive, and then we'll be able to add the other drive afterward. Because for RAID 5, you need at least 
three drives. So once those three drives do format, we will be able to add our fourth bay drive into the actual raid pool because raid five doesn't have an upper limit how many drives you can add. If you do plan to add like a ton of drives later down the line and are like eight bay NAS, I would recommend raid six. It just makes it easier for you to actually protect your data. So instead of raid five being like, hey, if one of the parity drives fails and another one fails on top of it, you can't save the pool. Raid 6 allows it to so if two drives fail, it won't affect the actual pull from uh, failing. It'll only affect if the third drive fails on top of it. So the Raid 6 is slightly better compared to actually Raid 5, but we're just going to use Raid 5 for the time being because that makes sense for our what we're doing. Now, keep in mind, when you change your Raid from Raid 1 to Raid 5, this process can take some time. So for me, I'm using like 16 terabytes. So it's actually taking up to five days to actually do it. And keep in mind, it is day three of the data transfer. So some important things to note, though, when you do do the upgrade is that you can can still use a NAS for work. So great example is me. I have some editors I hand videos off to to edit YouTube videos for. So they're still able to download the stuff off the NAS and upload stuff to the NAS. And I can also file transfer stuff too. So you can actually see the process for the NAS upgrading process is now at 70% one day 22 hours left which is very nice my cat's still being very needy to say the very least but the good thing about this is is i actually want to access the nas and still mess with files and move stuff around for youtube i can actually do so which is amazing so i don't have to like actually have to wait for the finish the process before like i can actually start using it for youtube projects again i don't know i thought i'd share this with you guys just because if you're someone who's upgrading your nas and you're worrying if it will impact your workload and will it slow you down you upgrade it it doesn't impact anything and you can still use it like you normally would okay i just got back home and a little i caught at the perfect time when it was actually finished upgrading to raid 5. so now the storage pool is actually set to raid 5 instead of raid 1 and we have now 40 terabytes of usable space protected for like one drive and one drive fails we just replace that one drive which is really nice what we're gonna do now is add our fourth drive for bait four so that way we have one two three four drives up to 60 terabytes because right now we doubled our storage amount from 20 to 40 but we want to expand it even further so what we're gonna do is go to three dots here go to the storage pool expansion then what we're gonna do expand and then we're gonna add that last drive from bay four so you can see this is our fourth hard drive and that will give us ex estimated capacity of 60 terabytes right here and of course this is gonna be another long way it's gonna take like another six days or seven days for the expand the storage and reformat the raid so it's gonna take a bit of time to rebuild it so that's gonna be absolutely painful but you know what whatever we're gonna have 60 terabytes at the end of it which is just gonna be absolutely ridiculous okay it's been five days and now the final drive has been added to our raid pool for raid 5 which is awesome so the next thing we're gonna need to do is expand our raid volume so you can see here volume 2 is the one i'm currently using for my editors for me to store my personal files and stuff and you can see it's only set to 20 terabytes right now so we're gonna need the changes. The first thing we need to do will be remove the actual SSD caching. Cause for some reason with the SSD caching, you can't actually expand the volume until after you remove this. So we're gonna remove this for the time being. And if you don't have an SSD cache already, you won't have to worry about this part. And now that we remove the SSD cache, we can actually expand our volume. So we're gonna do is click on the three dots here, click expand, and we'll be able to add the remaining space. So what we're gonna do is just type up the full amount here, which is 494 dot two and then that should be good we apply that and now it should add the rest of the space to our volume from 20 terabytes to 60 terabytes in total in a raid 5 format this might just take a second here okay so it has successfully added the additional 40 terabytes to our pool so we now have 59.7 terabytes of usable storage instead of the 20 terabytes of usable storage which is massive upgrade on my part and it's actually insane um so what we're gonna do now on top of it is re-add our ssd cache because this makes it easier for us to transfer files onto our nas especially if i'm doing video editing so what i'm gonna do is create a volume with it of course it's gonna use volume 2 that's existing then of course we're gonna do a read and write cache since we have two ssds gonna click next i understand and then confirm and then we're gonna add for raid one and then we're gonna add our two ssds and with that we, we all good to go. I'm just going to make it exactly uh, the max amount because I use a lot of uh, storage. We'll just do 16. Perfect. And then we're just going to apply this like so and format it. And with that, we now have our SSD cache and 60 terabytes of usable space on our NAS, which is absolutely amazing. 
So I want to go over my final thoughts on upgrading the Ugreen NAS for the DXP 4800 plus and things I would have done differently with this actual NAS because I'm not gonna lie the process I did to upgrade this NAS was probably not the most effective way. There's a few different ways you could have upgraded this NAS like actually moving all the data off the NAS onto a different device and then just deleting the raid pool and then reformatting into raid 5 which would have been significantly quicker plus on top of it too that I could just transfer all the files back on over. However, the problem with doing that method, and especially for my use case, is that I didn't have another like 20 terabyte drive laying around to do that exact method. If you do that for actually like a smaller pool, you can absolutely do that. And that's what I would personally recommend moving all your data over to a different drive, then re editing it to your actual NAS later on. That way, you don't have to spend like 14 days like I did. Actually, is it 14 days? Yeah, 14 days like I did to actually upgrade the raid pool from raid 5 and expand the raid pool plus on top of that to enhancing the actual like amount overall i probably chose the most inefficient method but it was the only method that worked for me personally so that's one thing i would have probably done differently if i was able to the second thing i would recommend to anyone out there is just like making sure when you make your nas the first time around assume for how much storage you're actually going to need now me personally i assumed i'm going to need more than 10 terabytes so i assumed 20 i doubled it now thinking back at that i should have just said whatever just buy four 22 terabyte drives max out the nas so that way it's a one-time investment i can just be done with it and that way i would have had like 60 terabytes off the and then i have to spend like what was it 14 days of my time actually upgrading it so that would be the other thing i would have done differently it's just like doing a one-time investment instead of like investing the nas first around and upgrading it later so yeah, that's my honest thoughts about that and what I would have done differently. And hopefully you can use this information for yourself to decide what you want to do with your NAS if you actually plan to upgrade your NAS or what you want to do next. Me personally, I see how upgrading a NAS is like this. If you need to upgrade a NAS and you're running out of storage, I would recommend just upgrading it. If you aren't planning to invest in NAS at all whatsoever, assume for three times the amount you're actually planning for. So if you think you're going to need 12 terabytes, assume 36. That's at least my piece of advice. But yeah, honestly, upgrading you green NAS besides that though was pretty straightforward and actually really nice besides how time consuming it was. So if you guys enjoyed today's video and found it interesting or even helpful, then make sure to smash the like button and get subscribed so you miss some future tech content. And I'll see you for one. Tech Rant out.